Hey guys, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this month. Uh, this month I have three books for you, um, because I, f I think, if I remember correctly, March is like when spring breaks happen and things, so you'll have more time for reading, so yay! So the first book, I've got Fox's Book of Martyrs, I'm pretty sure this is an abridged version, it's actually bigger than this. Maybe not. I don't even know. Anyways. Fox's Book of Martyrs, and then we're going to talk about Jesus Freaks. And finally, Tortured for Christ. So, yes, all very happy reading. No, actually, it's not. Uh, so, Fox's Book of Martyrs was written uh, sort of during the Reformation. Um, it was written by an Englishman named John Fox, hence Fox's Book of Martyrs, and he sort of just goes sort of chronologically and sort of geographically and talks about martyrs for the Christian faith from basically the first century AD up to his time when um, the Protestants were being uh, persecuted by the Catholics because Protestantism was new. And it, it was a little bit of uh, propaganda for the Protestants. There is some language in here that's a little bit like, let's not say that about Catholics. <clears throat> but it, it is uh, very interesting. Uh, with the history, there are, it, it's, it's a harder read, I'll, I'll say that. It's written in, in older English, I think this is even an updated version that I have, so it's supposed to be a bit easier to read, but it's, it's still more difficult to get through than I would like. I've been working at it for a while, uh, the chapters are long, but it just tells stories, so... Um, for example, here's the persecution of Dr. Constantine, which I don't think is the Constantine we're all thinking of. Um, account, an account of several remarkable individuals who were martyred in different parts of Italy on account of their religion. You can tell it's old just by the length of the titles. Um, yeah. So there's sections like that in each chapter. The chapters are, they are broken up. I, I really like how he organized his book. So we've got chapter one, history of Christian martyrs to the first general persecutions under Nero. Chapter two, the ten primitive persecutions. Chapter three, persecutions of the Christians in Persia. Chapter four, papal persecutions. Chapter five, an account of the Inquisition. So you can see he moves quite quickly through the first, what is that, about the first 1500 years of Christianity, and then the majority of the book, chapters 4 through 16, are more in regards to Protestants being persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church. But, yeah, and, and you can also see he, he organizes it by timeline and a bit by geography and yeah so that's fox's book of martyrs next we have jesus freaks which is sort of a modern day type of fox's book of martyrs it's not organized really at all in terms of the stories it's just story after story of martyrs who are referred to as Jesus freaks because they stood for Jesus, so they're the ultimate Jesus freaks. And this is a collaboration between the group DC Talk and the Voice of the Martyrs, which is an organization that um, offers various types of support to those who are being martyred in today's world. Um, yes, so. The, the stories in this book are from 
as far back as the first century AD all the way up to today. Really, well, sort of the 2014 or so. And they're not, again, like I said, they're not organized. You, you'll have, you know, the martyrdom of Peter right next to the martyrdom of someone from uh, the 2000s. Yeah. But, but it, that keeps it interesting. There is a bit of a, an introduction. And then it's, it's just story after story for a few hundred pages. And they're, they're quite short stories. It's not, you know, like I, I was saying this Fox, Fox's Book of Martyrs, the sections are quite long. Um, these, you, if you only have five minutes, you get through them. Towards the back, after you get through all the stories, you come to this, oh, they also have quotes just throughout the book from various murders. Towards the back at page 341, you get to persecution in the world today, which I think is really cool. And they take a bit of time to explain the difference between restricted nations where the government is the main persecutor of the Christians uh, versus hostile areas where it's more like your community might persecute you if you convert to Christianity or your family, you might lose your job, but it's not because the government said so. You can still get really beat up and killed in a hostile area, but it's not like the government is cracking down in those areas. And then it just goes through, this part is organized alphabetically, through all the countries at the time of the writing of this book. I'm just going to find out when that was. It was in the last few years. Latest copyright is 2020. Looks like it was first written in 1999, but it has definitely been updated since then. Um, yeah, so it just goes through the countries that at the time of the writing of this book were either restricted or hostile uh, in terms of Christianity. And it gives an overview of that country, the major religions in that country, who the persecutor is, whether it's local governments, the national government, extremist groups, communities and families, that sort of thing what it means to follow Christ in this country, and also access to Bibles, which sometimes is the most interesting part. Some of the places I'm like, oh, these people definitely won't have access to Bibles, and it's like, actually, there's a lot of Bibles in this country, or other places, it's like, yeah, they don't have Bibles. So, that's really cool, and it just goes through all of the countries. I haven't actually finished this book. This is where I am right now. I've gotten up to Lebanon. And so, what do we have after this? Ooh, there's more stuff after this. Probably should have finished this book, but I wanted to show it to you. So, um, then there's some notes on other areas of concern. And then there's notes about some of the stories, a general index, a story index. Oh, okay, so... If you are looking for a particular story, there is a story index in here. Okay. All right. Because so I was going to be like, what if you want to find a story? And you're like, I can't find it now because there's just no organization. Oh, and then there's a chronological index where you can look up things that happened in chronological order. That is so helpful. Look at that. All right. And then at the back, there's a little bit about... The organization, the voice of the martyrs, and a little bit about the talk. So, yes, that is Jesus Freaks. Stories of those who stood for Jesus, the ultimate Jesus Freak. So that's that book. Third and final book is called Tortured for Christ. And it is the biography of Richard Wormbrand and his wife, Sabina. They started the Voice of the Martyrs, and Richard was a pastor in Romania in the, I want to say the 60s? I don't actually know. The 
the 60s. Yeah. And further on as well. Romania, of course, at that time was under the rule of communist Russia. And this is just his story of being uh, put in prison twice. I think he was in prison for 14 years total. Uh, and the torture that he underwent. Um, yeah. So, a part of his story is is in the Jesus Freaks book, but there's a lot more to it. Um, and it really gives a good... Uh, a good understanding of how persecuted Christians think um, the 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 reach of the effects of them being arrested or tortured, um, and and also the mission field that they have in these very close countries and how the people in those countries perceive Christianity, things like that, it's just very eye-opening. And there is just one small section of this book that I wanted to read for you guys. I know this video is going long, but that's okay. Alright. So he's talking about a congress uh, where all of the um, communists brought all the Christian bodies into the parliament building, and they were Basically, the, um, yeah, I'll just start reading. One after another, bishops and pastors arose and declared that communism and Christianity are fundamentally the same and could coexist. One minister after another said words of praise towards communism and assured the new government of the loyalty of the church. My wife and I were present at this congress. Sabina told me, Richard, stand up and wash away this shame from the face of Christ. They are spitting in his face. I said to her, if I do so, you will lose your husband. She replied, I don't wish to have a coward as a husband. And so he stood up and spoke. And he didn't actually get arrested at that time, but he did get thrown out. They cut his microphone. Yeah. So that was sort of the beginning of their story. Um, yeah. And so I, I just wanted to introduce these three books to you. Um, I think they're a really great introduction to the persecuted church, and yeah, I really encourage you to read them. Whether you have time right now or later on, definitely take a look at them, especially the newer ones. Um, sometimes you think of persecution, uh, and it's like, oh, it's really far away, or it's a long time ago, and it's not, and it's still going on today. So it's really important to remember that and to pray for our brothers in Christ who, um, brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted. So, yes, I really encourage you to learn more about that.